Welcome! In this video I show you how to solve problem 4.4 as it appears in the third edition of Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics. Now this problem uh, asks us to show that this, th th this function right there satisfies the theta equation that I have written down in blue for the case L equal M equals zero. Right? That's what we want to show. And this is precisely the second solution that we talked about while we were solving the hydrogen atom, right, the, the angular part of the Schrodinger equation, that is unacceptable, okay, and we will discuss what is wrong with it. So, um, let's first show that it does satisfy the equation. So for that, we simply have to plug it in. So notice that this, we want to do it for the case L equal M equals zero, so that means that this entire thing is zero, and this is also zero, so, well, <laughs> the equation simplifies considerably. So what we need to do is take the derivative of this function with, with respect to theta. So we want to take the derivative. Okay, let me just rewrite this theta because, okay, <laughs> there. Of a, some constant, natural log of the tangent of theta over 2. So that's what we want to do. So let's of course take the a uh, to the front, it's simply a constant, and now take the derivative. So the derivative of the natural log is 1 over what is inside. So 1 over tangent is simply cotangent, so cotangent of theta over 2, and we multiply by the derivative of what is inside because of the chain rule, and that is the derivative of tangent, which is secant squared of theta over 2, and we still need to multiply by one half because of the chain rule again, right? The, the derivative of theta over two, which is one half. Okay, so here we can simplify this a little bit more because cotangent is simply cosine divided by sine, right? Of theta over two. And we multiply this by one over cosine squared of theta over two, and this is divided by two. So we get that one of the cosines will simplify, so we get simply one over sine of theta over two times cosine of theta over two. But because we know that if we have sine of two uh, x, this is two times sine of x cosine x. So if x is equal to theta over two, for example, this gives us that sine of theta is equal to two times sine of theta over two cosine of theta over two, which is exactly what we have there. So this entire thing is one over sine of theta. Okay, and notice that the next step, right, because this is the answer, this is the, the derivative, and the next step is now to multiply this by a sine. So we now multiply this by sine of theta. So by doing that, right, multiplying here by sine of theta so that we get exactly what is in there, we end up with a. And the next step is to take the derivative with respect to theta of a, which is a constant, so it is zero. So there we go, we just showed that it does satisfy, even though we saw it for, a part for just this uh, particular case. Now, what exactly is the problem uh, with this solution? So what is the problem with uh, the solution of uh, this one? <laughs> I was trying to move it, I couldn't, okay. So what is the problem? Well, when we have a hydrogen atom, we expect there to be no problem regarding angles, right? Because, you know, we have a hydrogen atom, this is our proton, and we want our electron to be very happy. If we, the electron wants to be here, that's okay. If the electron wants to be somewhere over there, uh, maybe, maybe there, that's also okay. The electron can be anywhere it wants. However, take a look at this expression. Because if we have theta, equal to pi, for example, then we have tangent of pi over 2, which is sine of pi over 2 divided by cosine of pi over 2. But what is the cosine of pi over 2? It is 0. So tangent of pi over 2 blows up, it goes to infinity, which means that we have the natural log of infinity, which goes to infinity. So that means that our solution blows up for theta equal pi. So that would mean that every time our electron goes near pi, yeah, things are going to get messy. So that's already bad. So there's another possibility, which would be theta equal to 
zero. What happens in this case? Right? Because in that case, our function is going to be a natural log of the tangent of zero, which is zero. But the natural log at zero goes to minus infinity. So it blows up again. So there's actually two points where the solution blows up, right? Theta uh, equals zero and equal to pi. So for that reason, this is not an acceptable solution for our physical situation. It's mathematically acceptable, but not physically acceptable. So there you go. This is how we solve problem 4.4. So I hope that this video was useful to you. If it was, please make sure to leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe, and maybe even consider checking out my Patreon. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.